120 hertz refresh rate, always on, smaller notch, A15 chipset, X60 modem, Wi-Fi 6E, bigger batteries, bigger cameras, better cameras, better video, mini, non-mini, pro, pro max, maybe one terabyte, maybe even touch ID. It's the iPhone 13 or iPhone 12S and it's as close as a month away. So should you start saving? There were a lot of early rumors flying around the return of touch ID, but not to replace face ID, to bolster it. And not necessarily in the power button, but in the actual display, either using Apple's own acoustic tech or Qualcomm's already licensed ultrasonic tech or yes, but more recent rumors have claimed in-display Touch ID has been pushed back a year or more. So I'm only gonna expect it when I see it. Same with a one terabyte storage option. It was bandied about earlier this year only to see our hopes MDK just murder death killed by more recent reports. And I mean, I absolutely want it, but if we get it, what will the cost be? And will it come with a RAM bonus like the first one terabyte iPad Pro? Because that would be all shades of handy, especially given the fresh leaks over Apple, including the glorious but gluttonous ProRes video format as a recording option. ProRes being Apple's professional resolution video codec. You know, the one favored in Final Cut Pro, used in cinema cameras from RE to Blackmagic. And rumor has it ProRes will support 1080p and 4K on the iPhone, but will it be the highly compressed LT or less compressed HQ, 10-bit, 12-bit, 12-bit Dolby Vision? Would Apple, could Apple go raw? Regardless, it should make pro video editing a dream, almost if not quite like ProRaw did for photo editing last year, but there are no new rumors on USB-C, much less Thunderbolt 4 to pull all that data off of the iPhone with, but also no new rumors on going fully portless either, at least not this year. What there will be is Qualcomm's X60 modem, which should offer better millimeter wave high band 5G for Verizon, maybe a few other markets, but fabbed on Samsung's five nanometer process, so it just won't be so damn thirsty. And that's not quite as good as TSMC's five nanometer original, much less improved five nanometer process, but Apple has bought all of that for the A15. And yes, A15, not M1, because M1 is a 14 generation silicon and Apple already shipped that last year in the iPhone 12. A15 will be M2 generation silicon and I have a whole entire explainer up on that already, which I'll link to in the description right below the like button. And we'll probably be looking at somewhere around the usual 20% boost to single core performance, maybe more, hopefully more for the graphics cores, maybe some extra vector efficiencies from ARM V9 and whatever, just whatever other surprises Apple manages to tape into the other silicon IP. As to the Wi-Fi 6E, that's like Enterprise E, the same thing, just the best version of it. And in this case, that just means same potential speed, but it can go to the six gigahertz range, which is less congested, meaning you should actually see more of that potential speed if, if you have a compatible router. Personally, I skipped six, because 6E is the Wi-Fi update I've been looking for. Also on deck, according to the latest reports, is cinematic video, which adds computational depth of field or bokeh, basically what portrait mode has been doing for photos going on five years already, but with better face tracking for video. So does Apple really have the silicon and segmentation algorithms necessary to make it work on video? I really hope so because it'll be just one less reason to lug around those much bigger, heavier cameras. On the still side, the dual rear cameras on the non-pro models are expected to go diagonal. But since it seems like early rumors of LiDAR coming to all the models have just come and gone, will it actually make a difference in terms of image fusion or is it purely aesthetic so everyone will know that you have the new units? You'll be able to do that new unit flex. Sensor shift though, which is basically Apple's version of in-body image stabilization or IBIS, uh, which debuted in the iPhone 12 Pro Max wide angle camera, sounds like it's coming to more of the cameras on more of the models, but does that mean all or just most? Basically bigger and better sensors all around though, including and especially the ultra wide angle, which will start auto-focusing all on its own now. Giant pixel bin sensors and massive periscope zooms seem to be another year or couple away but this will still all mean way better looking low light night and astrophotography as well. And all for the low, low price of just the biggest, most enormous camera bumps ever on the backs of the phone, but with an equal and opposite reduction in the notch size on the front of the phone, thanks to Apple just better integrating all of the components, which should look especially great on the iPhone's first promotion display, which is Apple's name for adaptive refresh rate. 
And that means it can boost up to 120 hertz for buttery smooth scrolling and better gaming, but also drop down to 48 hertz to show movies the way nature and Hollywood intended, 24 hertz for static photos and interfaces, and to balance out that higher power draw from the higher refresh rates, pretty much what the iPad Pro has been doing since 2017. But rumor also has it, it'll be able to drop all the way down to one hertz, like the Apple Watch has been doing since 2019, and for pretty much the exact same reason, ultra low power always on display, in this case for the lock screen. So you'll be able to check the time, maybe some widgets, without even having to pick it up and wake it up or you know, bark at Siri like an animal. But given the extra cost of the extra tech, will it be pro models only? I think Magic 8-Ball says signs point towards yes. It also seems like Apple will be packing slightly more battery into all the new iPhone models just in case, making them slightly thicker, if not full on thick. But combined with the increased efficiencies, even with some more demanding features, it should result in a net positive, including and especially for the iPhone mini, maybe taking it from being only a day walker to a full on night rider as well. And yeah, rumor has it the mini will be back for at least one last year, at least for now. So tiny phone fanatics, you might wanna jump on it while you still can, because it'll otherwise be the same 5.4 inch size, same with the non-pro and the pro, the same 6.1 inch sizes for both of those and the same 6.7 inch size for the Pro Max. Also similar colors, silver, some variation of gold and maybe matte black, even bronze rumored for the pros for the regular, black, white and red with a couple or few wildcard options. So orange, yellow, green, purple, maybe pink. Then if Apple wants to temper expectations like they did with the iPhone XS, they'll slap a 12S on the slides. Or if they wanna push it hard, they'll go full on full number again, like they did with the iPhone 8. And Tim Cook will just good morning us right into the iPhone 13. But real talk for a minute, just because Apple makes a new iPhone every year does not mean you need to upgrade your iPhone every year any more than car companies or TV companies making new models every year means you need to upgrade your car or TV every year. It just means that any year that you're ready to upgrade, you'll always get the latest, greatest model possible, which should last you the longest amount of time possible until you're next ready to upgrade. Or you just get an offer that is way too good to pass up, like the one that's getting me to upgrade my cookware. Because I'm like Jon Favreau when it comes to this stuff. Not Iron Man Jon Favreau and not Elf John Favreau, but yes, those two. But Chef John Favreau, the one who obsesses over every little detail, who recognizes cooking is the closest we humans can ever come to actual alchemy, IRL. Just like today's sponsor, Maiden, who've worked with renowned chefs and artisans to produce some of the world's best knives and wine glasses and pots, and in this case, pans. And Maiden delivers with premium kitchen tools available directly to you without the markup and with a lifetime guarantee. And right now, because you're watching this video, Maiden is offering you 15% off your first order with promo code Rene, R-E-N-E. -E. This is the best discount available anywhere online for Maiden products. Just go to maidencookware.com slash Rene and use promo code Rene for 15% off your first order. That's maidencookware.com slash Rene, promo code Rene. Clicking on that link really helps out this channel. And to help you decide if it really is time for you to upgrade or not, I've got deep dives on all the rumored iPhone 13 features. So just hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.